Once you've downloaded your curve ruler file, you'll just want to add it into a folder in your library. And here's mine. And you'll just right click add to workspace. So it's going to come in only as a garment because the rulers are pattern pieces. And I just have my translation set to 000. It doesn't really matter where you have it set. And then you just want to make sure you maintain your current size of your avatar anytime you add something to your workspace. So if you bought these rulers just to use in a render to have realistic looking rulers, that's fine. The material types for them are already set. So I recommend the metal ruler you actually have set to shiny. When you set it to metal, because the texture image already has a metal appearance, the metal does kind of a weird thing. So for me, it was best to render them set at fabric shiny. It's totally up to you what you want to change these settings to, but just know for the render that's on the website, they're already set to those settings. One thing to note with the metal ruler is the backside of the texture is actually a graphic. Currently in Clo, there is a limitation where when you move the placement of the face of the fabric, the backside will move as well. So there was no way for me to get the texture lined up on the front and the back. I had to do the backside as a graphic. So just wanted to let you know that that's the situation if for any reason you want to get rid of that graphic. The small French curve is set to glass for the renderings on the website. I've also added rendering thickness to these so that there's a thickness in the 3D window. And if you can't see that, make sure that your view settings are on thick textured surface. So if you do want to render these, you'll see this is what they'll look like at the settings that they come with. No matter how you're using these rulers, they're never really intended to be simulated. So I recommend that in the 3D window, you select them, right click, and deactivate them. You can freeze them, solidify them, but my preference is to deactivate and move them below the floor out of your way. The real purpose for these rulers is actually meant to be a pattern making tool. I just included the textures in case people wanted to use them in a render. First, you wanna select both rulers, right click and choose order, send to back. This is gonna put them on the bottom layer of the 2D window so that you can lay them behind your pattern pieces and trace them. Next, with them still both selected, you're going to assign them to their own fabric by clicking Assign in the Object Browser. Then grab the Edit Graphics tool to select and delete the graphic on the backside of the metal ruler. You need to be sure that you're on the backside fabric view in 2D. You can also easily ignore the graphic by changing your view. My preference is to use the translucent surface so that you can still see the texture a little bit, but you can also see through your pattern pieces. Now I'm going to select the fabric for the rulers and just give it a slight color so that I can tell the difference when it's laying behind my other pattern pieces. Using transform pattern, you'll just grab the ruler that you want and move it around and rotate it just like you're placing it on a pattern making table. We've already moved it to back, but if you wanna be safe, you can right click on the ruler and choose lock to lock the pattern. This will keep you from accidentally selecting any points on the ruler. Now you're gonna grab your edit curve point tool. The unfortunate thing here is that the curve points do then show up for the ruler, but the helpful thing about that is in order to match the ruler's curve, the easiest way to do that with curve points is to lay them exactly on top of each other. If you come across any segment points in your curve, switch to your edit pattern tool and you can either right click convert to curve point or you can move them while holding the D key and it doesn't affect any of the other curve points. If you're used to Bezier curves like in Illustrator or with the edit curvature tool, you'll see that curve points can distort the curve until you move them all in the proper place. So just rest assured that if you put the curve points in line with the curve points of the ruler, then it will match that shape. And it might mean that you just need to reduce the number of curve points that you have or add more. To unlock a pattern, you just right click in the 2D background and choose unlock all patterns so that you can move the ruler again. With the transform pattern tool, you can double click that center point 
and all of the points will light up orange instead of blue and that allows you to move this pivot point so you can click and drag the central point to another location and now when you rotate the ruler it rotates around that pivot point so it essentially allows you to kind of walk the ruler out you can also select a pattern and choose rotate and line it up to an axis like the y-axis so you just select a segment on the pattern and that will align to the y-axis. Another good option is rotate parallel to. So with the ruler pattern that I'm looking at, there's only one segment point on the whole pattern. So you need a proper segment to be able to align it to something. So I'm just going to use my add point split line tool and click to create a single segment here. Now I can right click and choose rotate parallel to and select a segment on my pattern and that same segment on my ruler and then my ruler will align with the bottom of my pattern.